All right, well, thank you everybody for being here in person. It's nice to see so many people at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it looks like there is a full crowd of 22 online, so I think that just tells everyone how much support Jizun has. Um, so just to introduce Jizun, and he'll tell you a little bit about himself, but he comes from the island of Lombok, Indonesia. You've probably all heard of Bali, so it's the one right next door. So instead of going to Bali, give Jizun a call, he'll tell you where to go in Lombok. Um, he did an undergraduate degree in animal studies at Mataram University, and then after that he went to uh, University of Queensland and he did a Master of Science um, in Animal Science, focusing on finding hay, I believe, in horses. Um, and he started here um, sort of right before COVID, and so basically COVID came along and threw everything for a loop. Um, but he persevered, he took a lot of classes, he's got an almost perfect GPA, um, and he's been a really great hardworking student and clearly has made a lot of friends. Since he's been here, he's also had the opportunity to present at a conference, um, a virtual conference that we had, as well as a, um, back there. Um, and he also went to Sweden last summer and was able to present there. So. Um, he's had a lot of great experiences, and I'm really excited for him to be able to present his work to all of you. So, uh, Jizi will present about the effect of adiposity and excessive weight carriage on exercise performance in horses. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Phillips, for the warm introduction. About me, um, I'm honored to present my work. First of all, I would like to also introduce a little bit about myself, maybe a little bit more, with some cool pictures that I took long ago. So I come from Lombok, as you stated, uh, located in West Nusa Tenggara Province, Indonesia. So I. I grew up looking after animals such as cattle and ponies, which was why I got inspired to study actually animal science. I got a degree, a bachelor's degree in animal science, focusing on animal production science uh, from Mataram University. Also, I got masters of uh, animal science from the University of Queensland. And finally, here I am at NC State University. Go pack! A uh, little bit about Lombok, you can see uh, here, basically, this is uh, some of the things that we did in Lombok, and you guys are always welcome. If you want to come uh, ride some horse on the beach, that'd be cool. Right, let's talk about adiposity. So there are several functions that adiposity in the body serves as. It serves as an energy storage, it insulates our body, to keep our body warm, and it also helps protecting our uh, soft tissue. Uh, and it also acts as an endocrine organ that basically produces a number of really important hormones to keep or maintain the homeostasis in our body. Now, equine obesity is defined as a state of excessive adiposity to the extent that it exerts a negative health impact to the animals. Surprisingly though, a large portion of the equine population in the world, based on the previous studies, are overweight. In other words, they are fat. So, it's really important for us, not only the academicians, but the whole equine society to be able to recognize how fat our horses or ponies are. So the main or some of the common ways to assess the level of adipose tissue in our horse's body are including the body function scoring system and prostatic score. Body function score is actually assessing 
the adiposity based on the fat deposits in a number of regions in the body uh, shown in the picture uh, here on the right assigning uh, a score from 1 to 9 to the horses or the ponies with 1 being fully emaciated and 9 being grossly obese in an ideal condition we could say a 5 and every increase or decrease of one body condition score that basically represents an increase or decrease in the body weight of around 20.5 kilograms. Meanwhile, the Kreisner score is actually an assessment of fat deposits along the neck that ranges from 0 to 5. So why are we concerned about adiposity? Excessive adiposity can cause a great concern about health. There are a number of metabolic issues that can be caused by excessive adiposity. First of all, insulin dysregulation, which is a failure of the body to actually regu regulate uh, blood glucose despite the high level of insulin. As we know that the function of insulin is actually to draw the blood glucose and put it into the cells, put it into the, um, for example, muscles and adipose tissue. So, in case of insulin dysregulation, basically, we can uh, see here in this, in this graph, this is a result of the previous study, that basically fasting insulin level or concentrations are linearly correlated with how fat the horses are. So, there are some other conditions that would be caused by excessive adiposity, including adipose tissue dysfunction, inflammation, arthritis, accumulation of fat around key organs such as heart and kidneys, thermoregulation will be compromised, and also laminitis. So laminitis is actually a state of the weakening of the lamina, uh, laminated tissue that connects the hoof wall and the cup and bone, uh, shown in the picture here, that basically, because of that, this cup and bone can rotate down and in a severe condition, the hoof wall can actually remove. So you can imagine what's going to happen if your fingernails are removed and you have to stand on it and you can imagine how painful it is. That's one of the consequences among many of the excessive adiposity. Not only does it cause health concerns, it also reduces performance. Some of the previous studies explained, uh, showed how it actually affected performance. For example, in endurance racing of 160 kilometers, horses that are too fat or too uh, skinny, they couldn't, they couldn't complete the racing. Meanwhile, the horses that we consider as ideal around 5, 5.5 body condition score, they have the highest completion rate. In standard red racing, it was shown that the body fat content actually was correlated with the VO2 max, which is the parameter of the aerobic capacity. So that the athlete is supposed to have high VO2 max, so the more body fat content, the lower the VO2 max, which is Part of the thing that we wouldn't favor. So, talking about adiposity in horses and ponies. Well, basically, horses are larger uh, equids. Basically, um, those with heights of around 14 hands and two inches, around one uh, 145 centimeters, and ponies are smaller than that. In general, ponies are more prone to having to being <coughs> overweight than horses. And if you look at the different populations of sport horses and ponies, in sports they are usually not judged, like racing, polo. Usually the body condition scores are quite ideal around five. But in sports they are judged like uh, hunter ponies, 
usually they have five body condition scores. In other words, they are usually better. So our projects really want to know more about how actually does adiposity affect the performance. That brings us uh, to some of our projects. So the first project, this was a survey on equine genetic perceptions on equine adiposity. Based on the previous studies, the prevalence of obesity in equine population reaches around 40 to 60 percent of the whole population. And what are the reasons behind this? Definitely that's because of the inner factors of the horses themselves and also the owners for the manager's decision. And what determines the decision of the owners? Of course, their understanding and how they see it, um, equine obesity and also the goals. What are the goals? They want to win the competition. There is a notion or assumption that basically because of a condition in which it is very common to see fat horses or ponies winning show competitions, maybe there is something wrong with the judge's perception. They would allow the fat horses or ponies to win the competition, which leads us to a question, how does equine judges perceive body positive? So we sent around 1,200 surveys, a survey to around 1,200 judges around the United States and uh, Canada, uh, representing various equine sports, and we asked them about their background, uh, their experiences, how they perceive thin and fat horses, and also we wanted to assess their ability to determine equine body condition that we did using by presenting them with a number of photographs representing thin, average, overweight, and obese horses, but we did not tell them. So it was their task to determine whether they were thin and so on. And we compared these results to the opinions from the, the experts, equine health experts. After that, we analyzed the data using descriptive statistics, proportion tests, and kappa green coefficient. Around 211 judges participate in this study, basically representing around 18% uh, of the, the whole uh, population that we uh, send the survey into. Based on this graph, we can see that the majority, a vast majority of the judges participating in this study claimed that they had more than 20 years of experience of judging and the majority of them also claimed that they were very experienced in judging either a holder or model uh, class of confirmation in uh, horses and ponies. When we asked them about whether or not they would penalize horses or ponies for being too fat or, or for being too thin, there were a significantly greater number of those judges who would penalize a pony for being too thin than those that would penalize a pony or horse for being too fat. And now moving on to the opinion of judges versus the experts. And we can see here, this graph actually represents, so this um, different colors represent the body condition of the horses, whether obese or overweight, average and thin. And then the one here is the opinions of the judges, or of the experts. And the white arrows actually represent the agreement between them. So the, the longer the the longer the white arrows, basically the more judges agreed with the opinions of the experts. And we can see in thin horses, almost most, uh, almost all of the judges actually agreed with all the uh, with the experts. But when it comes to an average horse, one of them, one of the horses, was underestimated. 
basically they said that the average horses were thin. The horse was thin. With the overweight horses, the majority of judges actually stated that they were just average, they were just moderate, they were just ideal. In fact, they were overweight. And with the obese horses, two of them was underestimated by the judges. And we can see here, surprisingly, that in one of the horses here, almost 40% of them, of the judges actually, say that the obese horse was ideal. So clearly there is a problem about the way they see the adiposity in horses. So we can say from these results that there are more judges, there were more judges actually would like to penalize the animals for being too thin than those that would penalize the animals for being too fat. Too fat. And we can assume probably that it is so hard for the judges to see excessive adiposity or over animals to have a risk of health concerns. Meanwhile, it's probably much easier for them to see the thin horses as, oh, this is going to be sick rather than the one that is fat. Also, the judges found it hard to actually recognize the overweight animals through the pictures. And we can state clearly that the judges here actually need additional education about adiposity, how to recognize overweight animals before the animals actually going to uh, a further problem. So the conclusion in this study is that the judges tend to be more lenient towards overweight horses than thin horses, and they had difficulties identifying overweight animals. Let's move on to the second study, relationship between basically adiposity and some blood parameters. As I stated before, ponies are more prone of being overweight than horses, meaning that they are more prone of having metabolic issues than horses. Previous studies also showed that there was linear correlation between adiposity and insulin and glucose levels. Specifically, there was one research in 2009 that showed the differences of body condition scores and creatinine scores between different, uh, di different types of sport horses, polo, dressage, hunter, hunter horses, and hunter ponies. And they found that the body condition scores of horses versus ponies were also um, more ideal than the, uh, sorry, the horses were more ideal than the ponies. They also found that the, the greater body condition score the greater the insulin. Surprisingly, all of them, all of the individuals, had normal insulin levels. Which kind of bring us to an assumption or a question whether or not sports or exercise regimes can actually protect the animals that are overweight from the negative impact of excessive adiposity. So, what we did was we tried to do research in a pony population in a national uh, competition, national pony competition. So we started recruiting the participants for this study, and around fifty-eight ponies were signed up for this study and we had an access to each of the ponies on in the morning on the day after the final day of the competition. So <coughs> two researchers basically assessed the body condition score and the crystalline scores and we also had an opportunity to draw uh, blood samples from the jugular vein 
following this, we uh, measured the glucose level and we centrifuged the blood and then we collect the serum for an analysis of insulin using radi radio immunoassay. Finally, we analyzed the data using distance correlation and logistic regression. So here are some descriptive data from this study. We can see the, the mean and the range here. For the body condition score, Prestonex score, and insulin in particular, we can see that the mean are actually higher than the normal range. <coughs> and we can see that in the Pearson's correlation analysis, there's not much going on. Not much of uh, things that we can uh, conclude. Like, we didn't see a strong correlation between any of these parameters. So, we conducted the further analysis on this. But before that, we categorized the ponies into these categories based on their BCS, CNS, and height, into moderate to fleshy, obese, ideal, and crystalline score, small, medium, and large ponies. And from that, we, gener we generate this data. So this is actually the, the state of the pony, whether they have pretty neck or ideal neck, moderate or fleshy. And then the one uh, here, basically this table presented the number of ponies based on the category. For example, the number 20 here is the number of ponies with Prestinac that are obese, and so on. And we can see here, for example, Prestinac first uh, hor horses with Prestinac versus ideal neck. We look at the number of them that are hyperinsulinemic. So basically, hyperinsulinemia is a state where they have uh, insulin level higher than normal range. For the ponies with pristine neck, the hyperinsulinemic ponies were 15 versus 22 ideal. Meanwhile, the ones with the ideal neck, only one hyperinsulinemic versus 20 ideal. It's a very small proportion. And we can also see here that around 96% of the animals were actually fat. And 64% had a crystalline. And hyperinsulinemia occurred in around almost 30% of the total ponies, 18% of the fat ponies, more than half of the ponies with the crystalline. Meanwhile, only 5% of the ponies with the ideal neck. So we conducted a logistic regression, basically simple logistic regression, on each of the parameters. And we can see here that basically the Prestinex score and body condition scores are somehow very correlated. And from the logistic regression, we can see that the ponies with Christianek had 12.6 times greater odds of being hyperinsulinemic than the ponies with ideal neck. Meanwhile, the forces for the ponies with um, obese body condition had 3.1 greater odds of being hyperinsulinemic than the moderate or two fleshy ponies. Surprisingly, we can also see that small ponies had around five uh, times greater odds of being hyperinsulinemic than large ponies. But we can appreciate this because the small ponies in the previous slide, there were plenty of them 